across all corners of the world a big concern for health professionals and health officials is the growing number of persons being diagnosed with chronic non-communicable or lifestyle diseases. We in Barbados are no different. And in the face of more young people being diagnosed with these CNCDs as they're called, government is targeting school-aged children and encouraging them to make healthier choices for their meals. And of course, healthy is always better when it's also tasty. Chef Derek Went has a lot of ideas about making healthy tasty using Caribbean foods. Hello, Derek. Hi. So what are you going to be making for us today? Well, in an interest of getting some um, people excited about getting back into the kitchen for some home-cooked meals, I thought we would start the series off by showing people how to think outside of the salad box. So basically when I think people, um, people approach salad, they think basically lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, and that's it. But I want to show you that there are very interesting ways of putting together really nutritious and tasty ingredients that are going to be able to make the enjoyment of a salad, even to the point of making a salad a full meal, to give um, kids the encouragement to, um, you know, to think how they might put together some really delicious things that they might enjoy themselves. And what about the time it takes? Because you know young people don't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen, <coughs> so what about that? Well, that's, I think mostly everybody doesn't want to spend a lot of time in the kitchen. So my focus tends to be about simplifying the whole process, actually making the preparation a lot more fun so that you get involved in the actual stages of the preparation and cutting back on the cook, any kind of cooking time or anything like that. So it becomes a whole simpler process and the idea is that we focus more on the, the enjoyment of the experience and therefore spend more time having enjoying the meal at the end of it. So kids, yes, definitely would, children would certainly probably get excited about learning how to open a sweet pepper really easily and make it into an interesting experience. Kids like color and shape and we can encourage them in that way. So not a lot of time, simplification and emphasis on taste and so on. Okay, so we look forward to tasting it. Well, great. Well, I'm going to get started now with prepping these things. One of the first things we do is take um, a locally grown romaine lettuce. One very interesting way of just getting it ready is to chop off the tail end. This has been rinsed. And what that does, it just opens up all your leaves. So you have the full lettuce at your disposal here to work with. All the leaves are clean. You can save your heart for little decorations. The, de the heart is, of course, the center of the, 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 the lettuce where all the leaves are the most tender and sweetest. And you can quite, quite simply just rip your, your salad into pieces. It's better to rip it by hand because it tends to stay fresh longer and you can get some really nice uneven pieces that makes the salad that much more attractive. Remember to use your crunchy bits at the end, those are perhaps the most delicious bits. So you have your salad greens and that's all ready. See how simple that was? Cabbage, this is purple cabbage. Take a piece, take out the heart and just quickly cut some small pieces, just a thin, thin slivers. This is a lovely color to add to any salad, and of course it's very high, very, very high in nutrients and minerals. That should be enough for the salad there. And you notice I'm just adding it straight to my salad bowl that I'm going to be serving it into. So again, lots less fuss. Um, here's a sweet pepper. Interesting way of opening up a sweet pepper is to insert your knife up at the stem end, just like that, where the stem attaches to the fruit. Pull your knife around the sweet pepper and go around the stem. And what that does, it releases the seeds. So you can take your seeds out completely and your, your pepper is pretty much ready to be sliced up. Tomato, you take out the stem. Okay. Cucumber, chop off the two ends. I have a little tool here called a zesta. 
which takes off some of the skin. You don't want all the skin off, but it's nice to have a slightly decorative cucumber as well. And then, let's see, an onion. Small onion I'm going to put into the, the salad. Take off my skins. Top and tail it, and it, the skin usually just scrapes right off. And that should be good. Okay. Um, okay, when you're cutting the peppers, of course, peppers can go into any kind of shape and size, when you, depending on what you're using it for. For a salad, you want to be thinking of things that go into your mouth, so bite-sized pieces, basically. You don't want things that are so big that you have to be sort of cramming them in or having to cut them before you can get them eaten. So quickly, um, just slicing up the peppers into little pieces that are bite-sized. If you notice the way I'm using my knife as well, pushing forward and cutting using my fingers as a guard. I don't know if you'd like to take a little closer look at how I actually prepare the, um, you handle the knife. The fingers act as a guard. Here, the knuckles are used as the, as the, as the guard. So the knife rests against the knuckles and the fingernails measure the size of the slice that I want to, to, to create. So very straightforward technique. You, this will take a little practice if you're not accustomed to it. Just throw those on top of your salad. This, this technique for the knife makes it really easy to handle yourself in the kitchen. Kids will need to practice this a little bit more, but of course it's something that's easily manageable. It's important that your knives be relatively sharp, always. Not so sharp that they are, are like razor blades, but and certainly not dull because more accidents happen when the knives are dull. Everything just quickly goes. You notice my counter is just getting cleaner and cleaner as I go along. Cucumbers, <coughs> if you're going to be eating the salad right away, um, you can leave the seeds in. But if you're not, you can take the seeds out by cutting it in half and using either a spoon or my zesta has a, a neat handle here that scoops the seeds right out, just like that. So all the seeds of the cucumber come right out. They're jumpy. Nice fresh cucumber. So that prevents the salad from getting watery. What those seeds, when you leave them in and the salad sits for any length of time, it produces water in the salad. So your salad tends to get a little bit soggy. Cucumbers can be cut into any shape and size. If you like square pieces, thinner slices, big chunks. If you're going to put cucumber into anything that you're cooking, it should be put in at the last moment. Cucumbers um, are interesting when they're added to something hot, but they nearly really don't need to be cooked at all. And my tomato. I'm going to cut it into crescents. So you see how fast that salad has been prepared. Throw them on top. Get your juices in. I'm using a red onion, not for any particular purpose except for the color. Again, you want to be thinking when you're making your salad to add lots of lovely colors and textures and shapes. Okay, um, we have some fresh basil. That should be enough. Don't be afraid to use basil. It's a lovely herb. It adds a lovely, lovely flavor to any kind of salad. Ripping off the leaves. Quickly, everything happens really fast. You don't have to labor over these things at all. They just very, very straightforward way of preparing. Just take out things that you're not going to be eating and make sure that they're not on your counter when you're prepping the food. Bunch all your herbs up into a little pile. Gather them up. 
and just pass your knife across the edge of it. Squeezing it with your finger, it just pushes it under the knife. Not too small, nice big pieces for flavor. Now what I want to do is show you how to make a salad dressing really, really fast. This is basically the ingredients of a general salad. To make that into something that is a little more substantial, we can add grilled chicken and pasta. I've actually seasoned some um, bow tie pasta here with some of my seasonings, a little bit of olive oil and sea salt. So that when I add the pasta to the dish, it's going to already have flavor. That's um, a, an interesting key point, is that when you're thinking of what you're putting together into your meal, that the elements should have flavor when you're adding them in. If something is going to be as bland as a piece of, of pasta, you want it to have flavor before you add it to a salad so that it's contributing something very, very substantial in terms of taste as well as the, the lovely shapes that pasta comes in. So to make a salad dressing, really basic, simple vinaigrette. You need a jar. Um, the hospitality school might tell you you've got to whisk it but at home you don't need to whisk. You can put it into a bottle and keep it very, very simple. Olive oil, this is extra virgin, which you don't cook with because it's such a good quality oil, you don't cook it because that destroys the flavor. You put about, um, that's say three parts of olive oil to two parts of any vinegar you like except plain white vinegar. I'm using apple cider and um, see some mustard, Dijon mustard, a teaspoonful, a little bit of sea salt. I like a dash of Angostura bitters in my salad dressing because it adds a lovely flavor to that. And if you want, you can add other things like fruits, mango, papaw, and basically then just shake. And that's your salad dressing ready. See how fast and simple that is? It's ready. Yeah. You don't need to spend a lot of time on that. What you do is, at this point, you just taste it. See if it has the right balance, which it does. Then um, you start to put your final ingredients together for your salad. tenders. Just throw them in a dish. I need my chicken board. No, I don't even need a chicken board because I'm not going to be touching it. Um, take this poultry seasoning. Season the chicken. Little salt. Little bitters. A dash of amino acids, the same spoon that I use for the mustard, and that's the chicken there, seasoned and ready to be marinated. This can stay overnight in the refrigerator if you want to plan your meal in that way. And, we, um, and that basically is how you season your chicken, done. And that's ready to be pan fried. So here we go, the final assembly will be just to be putting the pasta and the chicken into the salad bowl and that will be a perfect meal for anybody very healthy very tasty very very nutritious with lots of interesting aspects that make the experience of the salad that much more outside of the box of what you can expect from a salad so we can move to the other side of the kitchen now and put some put the chicken into the frying pan and get on with finalizing the salad so we can have our little guests taste it Just drop your, ch your chicken pieces into the oil to have them quick, really quickly. Give them a little space. You can use any part of the chicken as long as it's not got any bones in. Because if you're putting um, chicken or any meats into a salad, you don't want to have bones happening while you're eating your salad.
These are going to cook really, really quickly. What you want them to do is get a little bit of brown on one side so they look attractive. The seasonings are embedded in the meat, so that's a lot of flavor. And already they're starting to get nicely browned on the inside. And a wonderful smell that's coming from the seasoning. You don't want to overcook your chicken or fish for that matter because these things take only about three to five minutes to cook. If you cook them any longer, they tend to get hard and dry. So I think these are about ready to go. Yeah. And turn off my fire and transfer them. We don't want them to keep on cooking, so I'm going to transfer them to a bowl with my flavorful oil. Okay, so here we are with the cooked chicken. As I said, it just took about three to five minutes to prepare that. And we don't want to put these big pieces into the salad because as I said, as I mentioned before, when you're thinking about your salad, think about what can fit comfortably in your mouth. So you're not looking to cut up pieces before you actually eat and enjoy your salad. So um, one of the things we do is to make sure that our kitchen is somewhat uh, hygienic and kosher, so we use a different board besides the one we use for the vegetables to prepare the chicken. And I'm just going to cut them up into small pieces. These are really nicely done, not too brown. You don't want to put too much char carbon on your, on your chicken. And then just slice it into bite-sized pieces. Add them to your salad. Get rid of this. <coughs> you can add some of my pasta. Notice how simple it's all, all going into the same bowl. It's like a one pot meal. That's probably enough. Um, and then a little salad dressing. That is mostly for the lettuce and the tomatoes and the cucumbers. Hi, Rosie, you're back. Good. Let's move this here. How do you think it's looking? Oh, it looks beautiful. Now that's actually a complete meal, huh? You've got your starches, your proteins, all your nutrients from all the green veggies and so on. And we can even jazz it up a little bit more by putting some seeds in. I've actually got some sunflower seeds here set aside. We can sprinkle that in for extra crunch and protein. That makes the salad more interesting for children where you put little things in that they might enjoy. And um, some sprouts. These are always fun. Yeah. Now, Derek, I noticed something. You made your own salad dressing. Yes. What's the difference between a store-bought salad dressing? What's the benefit uh, of making your own? Yes. Well, in making your own of anything, the, you actually then know what is in the food you're eating. And that is a critical factor, particularly with the non-communicable diseases that are addressing, you know, that are so much concern in the, in the nation at the moment. Um, the fact that the seasonings that I have here, the Wentworks range, have no salt, no sugar, no MSG, nothing in them, but fresh herbs from, well, the herbs and spices used in traditional Caribbean food. Right, and are yeah. most of these locally grown herbs that you use? They are actually not locally grown. We're trying to get some backward linkages into agriculture to stimulate the sector in order to produce um, as much locally as possible. But that's a huge niche market. Here's a hint for anybody out there who's interested. The drying of herbs. We have so much sun. We have so much um, facility to be able to grow things naturally that the creation of herbs that can be introduced into products such as this to be produced locally is like a, a key factor. But, but the fresh 
herbs that you use in the fresh vegetables, were they local? They're local, yes. They're actually grown local. One of the basil was actually grown in one of the only certified gardens on Barbados. He had to struggle hard to get that. It's a hard thing to do to get organic certification. All the cucumbers, the peppers, the tomatoes, um, everything else. Chicken is grown locally, everything. The only thing I think that, that I put in there that was not local was the chicken, I'm um, sorry, um, the cabbage, the purple cabbage and the pasta. I'm sure we could grow purple cabbage in Barbados. Barbados grows everything, yes, right? Yes. You can grow strawberries in Barbados. You can grow Brussels sprouts oh, really? and broccoli okay. and all kinds of great things. Yeah, I know about the sprouts in it. Yes. And the broccoli. All right, so actually this looked very easy to prepare and very interesting. Now I have brought along two young people that you mentioned, yes. Dominique and Latonia, and we're just going to put your food to the test yes. and see how they like it. Excellent. Dominique is actually a secondary school student and Latonia is a primary student. So we'll see how they like it. Excellent. I'm sure any child would enjoy this meal because they love pasta. They usually enjoy chicken. And then the idea of the, the little bits of veggies and stuff will add right, all so the So you're, you're actually almost sneaking more nutrients into the food. Into the food. Putting the, putting the Correct. The pasta. That's right. And because children have all this energy usually to burn, they can handle the pasta in the salad. We can um, just top it with a few more seeds. Maybe a couple of sprouts just to finish off the way it looks. And we'll be ready to go. Young lady first. How does it look to you? Delicious. Does it look as if it's something you would like to eat? Yeah. Yeah. You told me earlier you really like vegetables. That's true? Yeah? You enjoy them? I find that most children, when they've had a bad experience with vegetables that are overcooked, they tend not to want to try them again. But why don't you all go ahead and try this and see how it is? Hmm? Chicken is the most appealing part for you. Yeah, both of you all pick up chicken first. That's great. What do you think? Mouthfuls. Nobody's talking, so that means something good, right? <laughs> you think you could probably do it yourself? Probably. It's very, very simple. Hmm? Rosemary, you want to come in and say something? Hi, Dominique. Mm -hmm. I know you like food, so what about this? Is this good? Mm -mm. Okay, so do you normally cook at home? Hardly. Hardly? Hardly ever. So, mm -hmm. so why is that? Just seems like it's too hard? Well, I would want to cook, mm -hmm. but then I'm like, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. This is the challenge here. To get into the kitchen and do something that's really easy and fun as well, to make it a very fun experience is really, I think that, you know, that is one attitude that I come across a lot, particularly not just from children, but from adults as well, is that they think of the preparation of food as a chore, that it's something that they don't really have want to be doing or they don't have the time to be doing, and so the health, as a result, suffers. But you can see, during this series, we're hoping to show how really easy it is to put together very simple meals within 20 minutes that are very, very nutritious and extremely tasty, all based on Caribbean-style cuisine, and that are um, nicely balanced in terms of the components and the elements that go into making it. So, Dominique, you think that you will definitely try to prepare yeah, sure. a meal like this? It's an encouragement. It makes me want to cook like this. Great. Great. Okay, yes, Derek. I think the children really seem to enjoy that meal. Yes, I think that they would. Um, the idea is, of course, just to get them to understand some of the linkages between the things that they choose to eat for themselves and the kind of quality of health they can expect to experience as a result of that. There's a disconnect in that whole process with a lot of people not making those links, those connections for themselves as to the, the source of the, the well-being that they can expect as a result of their food choices. And that's hopefully something that we can address in the ongoing process. 
of um, showing people how to cook some really healthy, simple, tasty meals. Okay, thank you very much, Derek. Thank you, too. That was Chef Derek Wett showing us how to make healthy, tasty. Until next time, goodbye.